Welcome everyone to the Michigan Association of Secondary School Principals podcast series featuring great discussions, insight, and resources on all things related to education and administration. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to season four of the MASSP podcast. My name is Ryan Casey. Uh, We are about 10 or so episodes into season four. Remember, you can access all of our previous podcasts by heading over to masspcom slash podcast and logging in with your membership. Uh, Today, we have a special guest joining us from the Michigan College Access Network. We have the Deputy Director, Jamie Jacobs, here today. Jamie, thanks for being here. How are you? Awesome. Thanks for having us. Hey, you know, we want to talk about uh, a couple big things going on in regard to the FAFSA and and some uh, deadlines that are approaching. Uh, But before we hop into that, Jamie, can you just give uh, our listeners an idea if they are unfamiliar with with MCAN, uh, what is it that MCAN does and specifically your role as deputy director? Of course. Yeah, so uh, MCAN stands for the Michigan College Access Network. We're a statewide uh, nonprofit organization. We consider ourselves an intermediary organization. So we provide support and services to the folks uh, who work directly with students. So your membership is the perfect base for that. Everything we do is in support of our mission, which is to increase college readiness, participation, and completion in Michigan. And we're particularly focused on the populations where we see the biggest gaps. Our low-income students, our first-generation college-going students and our students of color. I always say uh, if folks are brand brand new to us, the most important piece uh, to know about us uh, in a value statement is that we use the word college interchangeably with post-secondary education. So we uh, define the word college as valuable credentials beyond high school, defined as post-secondary certificates and degrees. So if you know us, you already know that, but if you don't, I want to make sure you understand how we use that word college. So that's high level who MCAN is. Uh, And then I do serve as deputy director and provide sort of high level strategy support for the organization, interfacing with all of our departments internally, um, and act as a key support for our executive director, Ryan Fewens Bliss. But then additionally, I lead our high school facing work. Uh, So that may be our work that supports school counselor training, high school grant making strategy. Uh, We support grants and partnerships between K-12 and higher ed. So all things high school facing, uh, I'm your gal and I'm the lead of that department as well. Very good. Thank you for sharing. So to to jump right in, why we wanted to get this podcast out to our our members, and again, this is uh, being attached to uh, an article, a headlines article coming from MASSP. Um, Can you share with everybody, what is the FAFSA challenge and what do they need to know about it? Yeah, so the FAFSA challenge uh, was actually kicked off uh, by Governor Whitmer's office, and then we grabbed several partners. So MASSP is a key partner, uh, our organization, the Department of Education, the Department of Labor and Economic Development, so LEO for folks who are familiar with them, uh, the Student Scholarships and Grants Office out of the Department of Treasury, who manages all of our state scholarship programs, uh, and then the Detroit Regional Chamber, who's been leading uh, FAFSA completion efforts in uh, Macomb, Oakland, and Wayne counties for several years years. So our organizations came together uh, and really wanted to set a challenge to high schools to rally around FAFSA completion. We asked schools in this challenge, or the governor's office, if you will, asked schools in this challenge to do three things. Set a bold goal for FAFSA completion. Uh, In general, if we set a bold goal around something or a goal, uh, folks work towards it. They rally around it. There's a talking Mm -hmm. point. There's a reason uh, to be thinking about it. So setting a bold goal. The second piece is selecting a FAFSA champion. Seems like a relatively low lift, but somebody who at the end of the day is keeping track of the data, who uh, is constantly talking about FAFSA completion over the months, uh, and is just really that one point person in a school building uh, or in a district talking about FAFSA. Uh, And then lastly, systematic data tracking to support uh, students who need it the most. What we have often found over the years is that uh, when, uh, when we sort of just broadly try to increase FAFSA completion, we talk a lot to the students who don't actually need us to talk to them, the students who have already completed their FAFSA. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of new data uh, available that allows us to pinpoint our support and target our support directly to the students who have not yet completed, who may be saying that they've completed, but they haven't. Uh, And that saves us time and makes sure uh, we're more efficient with the limited time and resources that we have. So that's what the uh, challenge asks folks to do. Again, set a goal, select a FAFSA champion, 
and uh, systematically track your data to target your support. Uh, the challenge at the end of the day is in support of MCAN's statewide goal this year that we set to reach a 75% FAFSA completion rate. To give that some context, our FAFSA completion rate last year, last academic year, if you think about this over an academic year, uh, was 56%. So this looks like uh, about a 20% increase from last year. But the reason we set such a bold goal is that Michigan as a state left over $100 million on the table in federal funds that went unused that were uh, sort of earmarked, if you will, for our our students and we wow. hate to see such a large number so that's why yeah. we set such a big goal gotcha so really what we're asking is um, that schools that are going to participate and try and take this challenge on is they too then should be trying to get a 75% completion rate within their own buildings then correct that would be fantastic uh, I think that's a good place to start. For some schools, though, 75% uh, is easy, and they should set, they really should set a goal that's closer to 90%. But then there's some schools that uh, struggle with their student populations and their family and just understanding uh, or making sure that they can help with the misunderstandings about uh, the FAFSA form. A lot of folks feel like uh, it's another federal form that feels a lot like taxes. There's a lot of mistrust of government. Uh, and so there's some schools that may have a 30, 40 percent FAFSA completion rate and maybe 75 feels out of reach, but if they could move a number from a 40 to a 60, that has a dramatic impact on that state goal as well. Absolutely. So I believe that the, the challenge uh, deadline, if you will, is coming up soon. It's going to be on, on March 1st. So we're trying to get as many um, schools to, to sign up and, and have students complete their FAFSA. How many schools have participated um, this far in this uh, official FAFSA challenge for the state? Yes, so we have uh, just over 340 high schools signed up for the challenge today. Uh, that feels really great, but it, the context is there's over a thousand eligible mm -hmm. high schools. So there's all sorts of folks uh, hopefully listening to this that are in your, uh, within your grasp that we could get signed up for the challenge. Uh, at the end of the day, it provides resources, it provides support, it provides data nudges and nags from our organization as well as just reminders to the school but then it also makes the school eligible for different incentives for students, for staff, uh, any school that sign up for the challenge, for example, that reaches a 65% FAFSA completion rate receives a tribute from Governor Whitmer's office wow, awesome. uh, about reaching that goal. So there's some opportunities uh, for some really cool incentives uh, to help drive, you know, folks energy towards something, knowing that there's just a lot of competing priorities. Absolutely. So what advice um, can you give schools who want to obtain this goal and participate in the FAFSA challenge, but maybe they aren't sure the best methods to do so? Um, you know, they're not sure how to get that number to increase. Uh, what, what have been some other popular strategies that other schools have done or any other advice that maybe you want to show that, share to help uh, encourage them uh, to do so? Yeah, so I've got a couple ideas. The first thing is make sure your school is signed up. Uh, I'll make sure I give you my contact information uh, so you can check, but check with your school counselor. Uh, they're usually the folks that know best, uh, or if you've got a college advisor, but make sure your school is signed up. Like I said, we've got in incentives and uh, awards and rewards, if you will, uh, and we want to make sure that you are eligible to receive all those, especially if you're going to be dedicating effort towards this, which most schools are doing regardless of the challenge. Uh, so uh, make sure that your school is signed up. Reach out to us if you don't know. It takes less than two minutes to sign up. Again, there's no tricks here. We're asking you literally for those three things. Set a bold goal, select a champion, let us know what their contact information is, uh, and make a commitment to look at data regularly to target your support. Uh, and I'll, I'll and jump survey, in real quick, Jamie, because yeah. I just want to highlight that, you know, they're, the form that they use is a survey monkey. And so that yeah. link is in both the article uh, that we wrote from MASSP, and then I'll also put it in the uh, podcast notes, so you will see that when this goes out on social media. So everybody will be able to get to that link. Uh, it's an easy survey monkey uh, form. Great. Thank you for saying it's easy. It is easy. We couldn't, I don't think we could have made it any easier. Uh, like I said, we can see average time. It takes less than two minutes because uh, we get back in analytics for the folks that are filling it out. So uh, that I'd say is step number one. Uh, and because the challenge ends March 1, we want to make sure we get you signed up immediately. I know it seems crazy, but it is almost March. Um, the uh, 
thinking about uh, strategies that are effective, um, I would say the most effective strategy, so we've been leading FAFSA completion efforts in the state uh, for uh, about six years uh, where we've had this focus on FAFSA completion during this time of the year. Um, and what I've got to say is the reason we are asking for a commitment to systematically track data is that is what moves the needle. Uh, like when, uh, you, when you think about the limited time and energy that we have in staff in our buildings, uh, just sort of pushing out calls to everyone, flyers home to everyone. Uh, they fall on deaf ears most of the times, or the folks that are grabbing them or sort of check already did that. Uh, now there is really great data available that is student level FAFSA completion data through the My SSG portal. So My SSG, like Michigan Student Scholarships and Grants uh, portal. Schools do have to have a data use agreement on FAFSA. Uh, administrators need to sign off on that and designate staff who can have access uh, but it's a relatively quick form but it just has to be submitted and then your uh, district then has access to log in and see on a regular basis real-time data uh, it's about a 24-hour lag at most uh, is my understanding on a student's FAFSA completion so yes no does the student have their FAFSA completed so regardless of what that student maybe has said to you uh, you have information straight from the federal student aid office uh, into that site that says the student doesn't have a FAFSA on file. Let's pull them in. Let's get them to log in. Maybe there's an error. Maybe they really do think they submitted it and they haven't. Or maybe they don't understand that the parent information isn't optional and it's required. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of misconceptions. So this allows uh, staff, again, with limited time to actually target their interventions. Schools that have looked at data and really done this, who regularly, weekly are looking at the data and saying, look, I'm going to pick five kids this week who haven't completed their FAFSA, and my goal is that these five kids by the end of the week have completed, uh, they're moving FAFSA completion numbers 20, 30% in a year. Um, and again, they're not doing anything uh, grandiose besides looking at the data, pulling these students in, and then connecting with their families uh, to support the family side of it as well. Uh, the thing I always tell folks that I think is like the bad news, but I think it's the reality we all already know, is that what we often do are FAFSA completion nights. Uh, so we train a bunch of staff or we train some volunteers in the community. We bring in the community financial aid uh, folks, which is a great partnership to have. And we tell uh, all the students and families in the community, come out to the school for this one night in the evening. And we try to make it you know, super sexy. We give them food and, you know, we try to have giveaways and guest cards and all sorts of things. Uh, and then year after year, we're disappointed that like five families showed up or <laughs> less than that, or maybe 10 families showed up, but we have a graduating class of 350. Yeah. Uh, and we put a lot of time and energy into these FAFSA nights. There are a few districts who say FAFSA nights work for them, but by and large, folks put a ton of energy into them and they're sort of disappointed with the turnout. Uh, it's not to say FAFSA nights shouldn't be something we offer. I think for the five families, the 10 families who get support, it is crucial for them and it is a strategy for that works for them. But if you're looking to move a number, 20, 30 percentage points, 10 kids isn't likely going to get you there. So how do you think about things on top of that? Um, and it really is this one-on-one -on -one connection, one-on-one -on -one support with students and then followed by one-on-one -on -one connection with families. So it's often a lot easier to get a student through the student side of the process. Families can be a bit challenging. Students will say, my parents said they won't do this. Uh, they don't want to be the ones taking out debt. They don't want to be, you know, they're not going to support financially the next uh, stage in my education. But the reality is none of those things uh, happen by completing a FAFSA. There's a lot of misconceptions that parents and families and students, quite frankly, don't understand about the FAFSA filing process and what it actually uh, allows or creates an opportunity for. So those one-on-one -on -one communications with families uh, allows the school counselor, college advisor, uh, whoever that student support person is to say, 
what are your concerns? What's stopping you from doing this? Let me at least make sure you have the correct information that you're basing that decision on. Uh, and then sometimes they don't want to talk to the school staff. For whatever reason, they're uncomfortable, they're mistrusting of uh, the school staff, or they think they don't really know because this is college and you're the high school. Uh, and that's where I think it's really important to make sure that we've got really high quality uh, go-to relationships with financial aid advisors at our local community colleges or our local universities so that we can give a really soft handoff to someone at the college who could also answer the same questions uh, and maybe even can answer questions that the school staff is not as well versed in, which is totally acceptable. Uh, and those financial aid experts can uh, can answer those questions, but we want to make sure it's a smooth and soft handoff, not just, hey, if you're, you know, if you have questions, call your financial aid office. Generally speaking, folks don't pick up the phone and do that if they're insecure or they're uncomfortable. And um, so it's really the tracking of data and working one on one, which I know is the last thing folks want to hear when they say, look, I have one school counselor and we have 400 seniors. Um, their ratio is 600 to one. There's no way they have time to do one on one. Mm -hmm. uh, how can you get some volunteers? How can you partner with the community college financial aid offices to build your capacity to support this particular work is what I would say. Cause at the end of the day, at the end of the day, what we're seeing as the most effective is that one-on-one. -on -one. Absolutely. That's really just great advice. So thank you for sharing all those examples. Um, of course. So really just uh, to hit this home, um, you know, we have this deadline coming up March 1st for the FAFSA challenge. It doesn't mean we have to stop supporting our students as they're trying to complete FAFSA. Obviously, we can continue to support those students much beyond that March 1st um, deadline for this kind of state-focused um, approach. Uh, Jamie, if somebody does have questions or they want to follow up or just something really that you said sparked their interest or thought, do you mind sharing your contact information right now? Yeah, of course. Uh, f my phone number is 517-316-1713. Uh, if I'm not in my office, that rings through to my cell, leave a voicemail. Uh, I also get voice to email, so uh, I'll make sure I grab that either way and follow up. Uh, but if it's easier for you to email, that's always a, a, a piece as well. And it's Jamie, my first name, J-A-M. I E at M I like Michigan college access dot work. Again, that's Jamie J A M I E at M I college access dot work. Awesome. Thank you. And again, I just, I've said it, mentioned it a couple of times, but um, we do have links accompanying this podcast to uh, the article that highlights some of this. We have some photos of some schools and a list of schools who have currently met uh, that challenge uh, goal listed. Uh, we also have a link to our FAFSA toolkit. Uh, on our MASSP.com website that you'll be able to see. Uh, you can follow MASSP on Twitter at MASSP or myself, Ryan Casey, at R-C-A-Y-C-E. You can also follow the Michigan College Access Network at MI College Access. So again, Jamie, thank you so much for being here and for sharing that today. We appreciate that. Hopefully we will help uh, uh, the state reach their goal uh, with a last minute push, we've got some uphill work to do, but I, I know Michigan uh, administrators, students, and parents are up for the challenge. So thanks again for joining us. Thanks for having us. Again, season four of the MASSP podcast is here with all of your favorite episodes talking about all things administration and education in the state of Michigan. Thanks for listening, everybody, and have a great day. Uh -huh.